Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to episode 41 in our Confederate Let's Play of Ultimate General Civil War. We're playing through the Grand Campaign, as I've already said, as the Confederacy, and we're on to the Battle of Gettysburg. We're about to fight that engagement. Uh, we recently reorganized our army so that our uh, cores are all fully built out back to their pre-Chancellorsville uh, casualty or strength. If you recall, the Battle of Chancellorsville was a bloody fiasco for us. We won it, uh, but it uh, cost us almost 50% of the forces that we deployed uh, in a just slugfest of a battle. We are now under the second invasion of the North in the Eastern Theater for Robert E. Lee, the Battle of Gettysburg. We have about 75,000 soldiers on our force, so roughly what the Confederacy had in that battle. And we're going to fight this battle really aggressively as we did Chancellorsville. The intent is to win on day one and avoid many of the casualties uh, that we would uh, suffer uh, if the battle was to draw out. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and drop out. This was taken from a live stream from just a couple of days ago, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out and uh, you'll hear me from, from the stream for the rest of the way, at least until the end. All right, guys, catch you guys at the end, and I hope you enjoy. Turn replacements. Oh, God, $71,000. Well, maybe we can cheapen that a bit by getting rid of the end fields and replacing them with something we have in stock. We do have Harper's Ferries in stock. So we can save $20,000 and do that and still have all veteran troops here. And do that. We literally just have enough to uh, build, fully replace our Chancellorsville losses. Just barely. Uh, and this entire 1st Division stayed with their veteran troops, so these are excellent units. Uh, but the 1st Corps, the 2nd Corps, and the 3rd Corps are all now back for their full strength with two men to spare. With the exception of a couple of uh, artillerists that, again, we've decided uh, we're not going to be replacing. Um, the 1st Corps could be strengthened with a division. So I, I'm toying with the idea of stripping a division from the 3rd Corps, but I don't know, and, and you guys can fill me in, I don't know if that means that I have to um, win on day one. Like, if the, if the third core only has two divisions, is that all I get for the attack on Little Round Top if we get to day two? That's a good point, J Street. I do have a tendency to kill cavalry, but my infantry tends to be do a little bit better. Well, unless you watch the Chancellorsville battle that I fought just the other day. Uh, where I killed everyone indiscriminately. Okay, so you're saying that my existing units carry over regardless of which core, and they all get to continue fighting on the second day. So uh, stripping the third core wouldn't really matter because I'd still get to use the first core in the attack on Little Round Top. In that case... Maybe we use the 1st Division of the 3rd Corps to strengthen the 1st Corps. So it'll be a 20 Brigade uh, Corps with 4 divisions, all with 2,000 men. Um, the 2nd Corps will stay its 3 divisions, 15 Brigades, and the 3rd Corps will be reduced to 10 Brigades uh, and 2 divisions um, for the Battle of Gettysburg. All right. I know they all carry over into the battle, you guys. I was just more curious of, like, how the phases of battle work and where the soldiers are and all. Um, with that being said here, if we go to the armory, we still, again, we can't, we now have 1,600 Fayettevilles, almost. So by the time we get to the Chickamauga campaign, we will have enough, I think, to have a whole brigade armed with just Fayettevilles, which would be pretty awesome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sell the 700 Sharps and the 141... Smiths. I don't think I have any cavalry anymore, actually. I didn't build any cavalry brigades, so this is an infantry-only army. Or no, the second corps has, has Amon's brigade of cavalry. So we've got one cavalry brigade. Uh, let's go back here. So we sold our skirmishers, sell our Frank and Wessons. We'll keep the Lamats, because I assume someday I'm going to go ahead and have another cavalry unit with them. We'll sell the howitzers that we captured. Um, I think we're going to sell 12 of the Napoleons, because, again, we're not looking at, at building out large numbers of replacements uh, with with those. I'm going to sell the ordnance rifles, which I don't even use anymore. I'm going to sell 12 of the parrots again. Uh, I may need, as I get another division in these cores, if I ever end up having enough manpower to do it, uh, using, you know, using some of this to form some new artillery batteries. 
Uh, but I've got... All I would really do is probably build a 12-gun battery, uh, of which I have more than that for multiple different gun types. So actually, the parrots. Let's go ahead and sell 10 of those. You can see here we're bringing in quite a bit of money selling off some of these things. The Tredegar, we've got 21 guns. I actually want to... Here, the 20-gun battery here. These are 24-pound howitzers. These are 12-pound Napoleons for this 4th Division. I'm actually going to replace these guns with Tredegars. Uh, the Tredegar has much less damage but more efficiency. And given I'm going to be on the attack here, I think the efficiency is going to be more important. It's an interesting gun. I'm kind of curious how it fights. Its, it's effective range is 1,700 versus the 1,400 range of the Napoleon. The accuracy of the Napoleon is 10. The accuracy of the Tredegar is 50. But I think for this, this battle where we're going to be on the offensive rather than the defensive, having these good long-range weapons is going to be more important than the, the sort of shotgun uh, batteries of, uh, of Napoleon's. Um, so go ahead and do that. Uh, additionally, any other small batteries that we can replace some of their guns? Their 21-pounder parrot guns. Let's see here. Um, Alright, sorry, just got a text message from a friend. Um, let's see here. I think we're about done there. So we could probably go sell more of that Napoleon. More of those Napoleons. Let's go ahead and sell 20 of them for $24,000. Not that I need the money instantly or anything. You can see here we've got $188,000. I'm going to keep our reputation at 68. I'm not going to get any more CS Richmonds. I could probably replace some of these troops with CS Richmonds. Some of the Harper's Ferries or Enfields or whatever. Um, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. I am going to go ahead and sell off these Springfield 1844s. I'm never going to use them. I might use the Palmettos, but I'm going to sell off um, the ones I captured in the last battle. Again, because I don't know what guns I would use if I did expand the army substantially, if I ever have enough manpower to do that. All right, so we've got $200,000 that can be used for fun things, but we don't have any guns to buy them. Um, and we've got a lot more artillery than we need. buy 16 of those. So, let's see here. 10 pound parrots, Napoleons. We're going to replace these Napoleons with the 24 pounders that I just purchased. So our first division is going to have a battery of 23 24 pounders. Um, our a battery of 19 Napoleons. 20 24. So two batteries of 24 pound howitzers. A battery of 10 pound Tredegar rifles. And a battery of parrot rifles. Um... Honestly, it might make more sense to get rid of those howitzers, but I hear the howitzers are incredibly effective, so maybe not at range, but we'll leave them as is. So our army is ready for the Battle of Gettysburg. Let's go ahead and get our forces set up. Okay. So the first course, first wave, 20 divisions. That's really representing Hill's attack. The second wave of 15 brigades, and the third wave of tomorrow's reinforcements of 10 brigades over here on the right. So the first attack wave, 20 brigades. Our entire army is remarkably close to the Confederate army at Gettysburg. They had about 75,000 men, according to most of the sources I look at. Uh, and it shows that we have 74,000. Um, the Yankees, I'm assuming, have substantially more than me, although I don't have really any recon to tell me what they have. Um, you can see July 1st, 1863, Battle of Gettysburg. We are invading the Union soil for a second time after our latest cons uh, consecutive successes on the battlefield. We hope to achieve a decisive victory that could end the war politically, but we also want to gather supplies for our army outside of the war-torn state of Virginia. General Hooker, Hooker, leading the Army of the Potomac, began to pursue our army in Pennsylvania. However, his poor performance at Chancellorsville and his very cautious maneuvers eventually led Lincoln to suddenly replace him with General George Gordon Meade. Although you have been ordered to avoid a general engagement with the enemy until we can fully assemble our army on carefully chosen ground, one of your division's generals disobeyed that order by aggressively advancing to the town of Gettysburg. While most of our corps are operating too far away from the main army, we must now gather our forces and counter the Union threat at Gettysburg. All right. 
Well, we are going to play the Battle of Gettysburg. We are ready. Let us go. One of your divisions is marching toward the town of Gettysburg in a reconnaissance mission. The Army of the Potomac pursues our army and we need to scout the area for enemy movements. I don't have any cavalry, so it's just like General Lee. Buford's cavalry is delaying our advance, and he seems determined to defend the ridges west of town. Could he be supported by infantry? We must find out by attacking them. Alright, so we start the battle with just three brigades. All infantry, no artillery. Otis's brigade, the Stonewall brigade, and the Enfield brigade. Try and envelop them. Put two brigades in through here, one up and around the top. Butcher is here. Supply wagons over here. I don't think it's worth deploying a battery of artillery. So we've got 30 minutes till the next phase. I'm going to go ahead and advance these guys straight on, and Otis is going to come up and around, hopefully pushing back uh, Buford. We'll also go ahead and detach some skirmishers here to move off to the left to guard our flank from flank fire. And we'll detach some skirmishers from Otis uh, to scout out ahead kind of toward this uh, Oak Hill. So we're kind of out west of the town of Gettysburg. The town of Gettysburg, I assume, is back here. Or no, this would probably be Seminary Ridge. And this is McPherson's Ridge. This is Oak Hill. Um, so we've got about 30 minutes till the next phase. We'll go ahead and get our troops in motion. And uh, this is going to be... Uh, Gettysburg is just like the perfect war game battle because it starts small and just g gradually scales up as all the troops arrive. Um, for both sides, really. So it's almost like you've got a built-in tutorial... Uh, which is followed up with, um, you know, the actual major part of the engagement. All right, this is the wood line, I believe, where the Iron Brigade engaged in. Maybe not. I, I might be up here. Not really sure. Butcher our commander forward. It's interesting how different this initial phase is. From Skir or from Ultimate General Gettysburg, which the same company made, but came out first. And those companies of infantry. gonna kind of stove in our flank a bit here they're very aggressively moving forward here with a uh, one mounted company or whatever one regiment and uh, one infantry unit keep advancing keep pushing forward I assume the Yankee infantry is gonna come up once our 30 minutes is up that would be my assumption I secured McPherson's Ridge Pressing on. Ideally, we got to get these guys out of the open, out into the open. So skirmishers. skirmishers move forward here as well to this wood line, I think. Double. Alright, so we push them out into the open. The Enfield Brigade can kind of engage at leisure against these troops. Shattering Caliph's artillery battery here with a volley from Otis. Driving him back. And... We're taking quite a few casualties. Our skirmishers are doing far better. The not densely packed ranks. Maybe we should let him shoot up Devon. All right, now advance on the double. We're advancing across open ridge lines. Now we'll move our my wagons up. Reynolds First Corps is spotted. First Corps, led by General Reynolds, is marching to our positions. The Iron Brigade is with them. Right, so the enemy's going to have more infantry coming up. There should have some reinforcements coming shortly as well. 
driven some of these guys back. I'm gonna try and flank these. Let's rear. Otis, charge Devon. Get him off. Or I guess have your skirmishers charge Devon to get him off our flank. Back moving on Caliph. Great if we could get in these def not really defensive works. First Corps, led by General Reynolds and Cutler's Brigade, are arriving on the field. I don't know if they're actually up here. Yeah, they are. Damn it. I would have assumed they would have had to march up, but I guess not. Go ahead and get in these works. We'll just drive across. Found. Flanks a bit in the air. Cutler's Brigade's got to come up here. Our Corps begins to advance. Very nice. We'll go ahead and advance you guys up here toward Oak Hill, toward where Cutler is. Overwhelm him. Take that objective. Mm. Those damned black-headed fellows from the Army of the Potomac, the, Ar the Iron Brigade, are here. Keep advancing. And we've got our three inch rifle battery, which is actually now we're using 10, 10 pound parrot rifles. The dumb thing is this whole brigade's now on our flank, so it's just like, all right, you're 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 flanked, even though they never even marched into position, they were just there. So that's kind of frustrating. Now we're in the open, and they're all in really good cover. Hopefully we can give these guys a couple good volleys. Come on, Stonewall Brigade, fire your damn weapons. There you go. Second Wisconsin being driven back. These guys are all coming up to extend our line. Good. Ideally, we take the hill and then break their flank. I don't know if I've ever played Gettysburg from the Confederate perspective in Ultimate General Civil War. I never got this far in the Confederate campaign, so I'm pretty certain I never did. Otis is really getting shot. I'm going to have him fall back. Stonewall, too. Have these brigades all form up on the left. They're going to go on head first into these woods. We've got 32 more minutes till the next phase. Man, you guys. Just 160 men. Your morale should be recovering faster than. We're moving to position. you to flank these guys. Don't want you to double quick anymore. I want you to take it more slowly. There's no rush, I don't think, at this point in the battle. These guys are all dug in in really good defensive works. I don't want to assault them Head on, I'd rather kind of break them in the north here. Cutler's one brigade is a little bit exposed. I think. A little bit, he's in the open, really. Regiment, 56 Pennsylvania. We can get the Stonewall Brigade over here as well. Let's see if we can get two brigades to kind of have a double envelopment here. More Iron Brigade regiments spotted, sir. Okay. You guys can use the cover here of these towns to help offset your... Just moving here to 
guard the Lorenz Brigade's flank. Trying to break Cutler's Brigade with the Texas and Vaughn's Brigade, but it doesn't look like it's working. Ugh. Here to boost the morale a bit. You guys are pretty much in the open. The brigade on the right, the infield brigade's got a little bit of cover. Alright, so those two brigades got shot up a bit. Mississippi's up. They're flanked, but they're at least in good cover. Two brigades at point blank range volleying this iron brigade. Yeah, if they're not going to do enough damage, let's bring this artillery up. They can fire canister rain at close range. More Yankee reinforcements? Good God. More divisions of the First Corps are coming up. Where are our additional brigades? We've only got, what, like five? Wounded. That's interesting. So there's more Yankee troops that are coming forward here, but we've actually started to push back the southern end of their line. Federals are going on the offensive. That seems like madness. Of course, they're going to push us back, but... More brigades are coming up, but if they want to attack us... In the open? It's a great skedaddle! Everybody's running! Run for your lives! Alright, Cutler's gonna get this regiment destroyed between Texas and... Mississippi should be able to deal with this other brigade of Cutlers. Meanwhile, we've taken Seminary Ridge with a flanking maneuver of our own. Oh god, that's a lot more troops. They're all defending up near... Oh, whatever. You guys are in good cover now. Doesn't seem like there's any troops coming up from over here. They're all coming from the north of the town. Fall back, and I want you engaging them in the open by yourself. Advance with Otis, advance with the Lorenz Brigade. We've got more brigades arriving on the field, but I don't really want to attack the hill head on if I don't have to. I'd rather have these guys kind of advance down here. We can kind of go up and around them. If that's the way this battle's going to play out, that we can just advance through the cover of these woods. I would much rather do that. It would actually drive them away from their reinforcements, at least historically. Okay. I'm up here. I can recover some of the morale. And then pull in battery up here, because I think they actually have 24 pound howitzers, which they do. This is weird. It's a weird fight. Alright, these guys are in perfect cover. The Federals are going to try and crush our flank. Let's move the Orphan Brigade up here. A double to help stop them. Texas Brigade's got a whole bunch of troops coming up on their flank, but they're all moving through the open. Enfield Brigade's flanking these guys. My god, we're flanking them! I get We're flanking them. Good 
Ugh. Gonna overwhelm us a little bit over here. All right, Hexamore, you're gonna have to shift. Move the Napoleons up here too. And the Texas Brigade's melting away. Move them into the railroad cut. I think that's what that is. This little defensive work here. Which was really not the best defensive position. There was kind of a slaughterhouse at one point. But I think the way the game treats it, these guys will be good in this position here. Kind of gotten in around Meredith's rear. Problems with the Iron Brigade is they're such a damn good unit that you basically have to wipe them out to completely destroy them. They won't rout it like 500 men like a lot of units would. The other weird thing, the way this game... Oh, God, they got pushed out of the railroad hex. Really? Not hex. The railroad cut. Man, my troops' morale must not be so hot. Didn't these brigades have better morale? Like, I guess they've lost 700 men, but still. We haven't taken Oak Ridge yet. Only objective we haven't taken. Which is historically accurate. The Confederates didn't take that till Early's Corps, I don't think, came on the field. Only got about 38 more minutes, minutes in this phase. Which I assume the next phase is Howard's Corps starts showing up. We have inflicted more casualties on the enemy, though, than they on us. That's incurred. I don't like the idea of Otis going up the backside of this hill, though, against crack troops like me. Not unless we're also hitting him from the front. Haven't been doing yet. Keep pressing in. This could be an awkward position that we'll be in, though, depending on how this next phase unfolds. So let's apply up here to these. These guys are low on supplies, so we should really move forward here. The Texas Brigade, their morale's. Some of these units' morale has really started to recover. Stone's Brigade's exposing their flank to Hexamer, so shifting his fire there right into Stone's flank. Well done. Well done. Stone's being pushed back. We're slowly driving them north. I'm just worried about what the next phase will bring as uh, the next core comes on the field. Bond's Brigade just kind of sitting out here doing nothing. Kind of not about him. This Iron Brigade Regiment's almost dead. We've got Baxter's Brigade kind of moving in on us. I don't think there's any way we take Oak Ridge for the next phase. Could be wrong. Forward. Get to hit the weakest unit up here. Artillery. Butcher over here to give these guys some morale. We've basically got the Federal Army here on Oak Ridge surrounded. Uh, Dead, it is not streaming on YouTube. I've kind of moved away from streaming. Whoa, don't charge. Didn't want you to do that. Please fall back. Get your volley off. Oh, God, take a volley. I am not streaming on YouTube uh, at the moment. I really am not planning on dual streaming anymore. All right, the Iron Brigade, one of the Iron Brigade regiments has surrendered to us. This is awesome. 
All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and end the video. Uh, we've been going for about 30 minutes. We're in the first phase of the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, you see we just captured a brigade or a regiment of the Iron Brigade. Uh, but we're in the first phase of the Battle of Gettysburg. We have taken Seminary Ridge, McPherson's Ridge, and we have pushed the Union First Corps under John Reynolds north onto Oak Ridge. We haven't taken that ridge yet. The enemy has some good ground, but we've been able to get in around their their right flank and we're driving them away from any additional reinforcements that should be coming up here in the next few minutes we're down to this final initial phase of the battle of gettysburg on the first day of the battle of gettysburg and my goal here is to win the fight on day one to get to cemetery ridge to save all the casualties that we can save by being really aggressive with the first corps here and winning on day one again our first corps is taking really heavy casualties but the fact that the fact is if we win today our third corps won't even have to be engaged and i presume our second corps will be rel relatively unbloodied as well so i think it's worth the sacrifice with that being said guys i'm going to go ahead and end the video i hope you're enjoying uh this game so far and this series so far and next time around we'll have howard's 11th corps coming up uh kind of in the rear of mu much of our forces we'll have the enemy on two sides so uh that'll be a little bit risky for us with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.